Peace, the Lord be with you. Welcome to St. Peter's this morning. I know you're excited. You have just a couple days left to do your shopping, so I know you want to get out there and beat those good deals or whatever. So, uh, but I know you're excited to be here, and that's what we want you to be, uh, here in the house of the Lord, to hear his word, celebrate the sacrament, uh, receive the gifts he has for us, uh, and to be prepared to go out into the world. So welcome to our guests. Welcome to our members this morning. Everything you need is in the worship folder, and it will also be projected on the wall behind me. Having said that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we gather this morning, we are excited, uh, not about the gifts, not about the meals, not about the deals, uh, but about your son, Jesus Christ. We will remember that he was born into this world so many years ago as the greatest gift of all to mankind, the gift for the promise of salvation through him and him alone. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we worship the Holy Spirit, work through the word and the sacrament to uh, cleanse us, to build us up, and to prepare us for what lies ahead. Be with us now as we worship, O oh Lord, and may we continue each and every day to look anxiously for the second return of your Son, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, on page four, we will begin with a great and mighty wonder. Top of page four. rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
That our eyes and our ears may be open to receive the mystery of God's love, let us first empty ourselves of everything that has closed our hearts to God, confessing our sin and need for forgiveness, of forgiveness and life. At the Lord's own invitation and command, I confess all my sins to God, the very thoughts, words, and deeds with which I have offended. I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. We're going to continue with We Light the Advent Candle. We're singing four stanzas today. You should have your sheet, otherwise it's in the bulletin on the board. We're going to sing stanzas one, two, three, and four. Bottom of page six, we continue with the Kyrie together. 
Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might. Strengthen your gift of faith in us and keep us by your power to be your own. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I'll ask the children to come forward for the children's message. Oh, you forgot to buy, but you brought something anyway. You know, this is one of pastor's terrors. But anyway, good morning. Have a seat. <laughs> Have a seat. Or right there. Either one works. So this is what he has brought me this morning. Okay. And what is this? It is a yo-yo. Uh, it is not to be used as a term, term of uh, degradation. Uh, but it is a toy, right? This one says tegel or tegile, something like that. Anyway, it's a yo-yo. So what do you do with the yo-yo? Where do you put it? <laughs> but when you're going to use it, where do you put it on your body? Do you know? Your finger. I'm not sure which one. I've never been able to get one of these to work. I can do the yo, but I can't do the yo back. I don't know why. <laughs> It's just one of the things pastor can't do, and that's okay. Somebody else can do it. There are people who do this uh, as a sport. They do all kinds of neat things with this. They can get it to go up and down and around and around and all kind of weird stuff. But the, but the main principle is, is you hold the end of the string on a finger, and you do something, and it goes down, and it spins a little bit, and it comes back, right? So it goes down, and it comes back up. It's kind of like life, right? So Christmas morning, you'll be at the top. And then probably two or three days after Christmas, you'll be down here because you'll have played with all your toys and you won't have anything new to play with. So you'll be down at the bottom depressed. A little bit. And it's kind of like life, though. We have ups and we have downs. And sometimes it seems like we go up and down a lot. Some people think that God is holding the end of the string and he's the one that's doing this, making our lives go up and down. And in reality, he's not. God is uh, watching over us, and he is in control, but we kind of do a lot of these things to ourselves. You know, we make bad mistakes, we make bad decisions, and then, of course, things happen in the world. So there are times when we are very low, and we feel alone, we feel not happy, uh, maybe we feel God's not around, and there's other times when we're way up here, and we feel great, right? Because everything's going good, we've got everything we want, mom and dad are good, everything's good. What God wants you to know is it doesn't matter if you're up here or you're down here or somewhere in between, God's always with you. Jesus is always with you. He watches over you and he cares for you. He always wants you to be up here at the high spot, but he knows that we live in a broken world and sometimes we're lower and sometimes all the way at the bottom. So no matter where you're at, top or bottom, always remember Jesus is with you and cling to that hope and that promise and life goes a lot better. Okay, so I'm going to give you that. Does that one light up when you do it? No? Okay, some of them light up. Some of them make songs, too. All right, let's bow our heads, fold our hands, close our eyes, and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank, you thank you for being with me, being when, with me. Times are good, when times are good, when times are bad, when times are bad and everything in between. between. Help me always, always. Give, thanks, give thanks, love you, love you. and tell others, about you. tell others about you. Amen. Amen. All right. So, there you go. You may take from the bowl. I'll put this back. You're very welcome. Very welcome. Thank you for bringing the yo-yo. Uh, note to you, if you want to give me a gift, please don't give me a yo-yo. There you go. The Old Testament reading is from 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 through 11 and verse 16. 
Now when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See how I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? <laughs> now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And have I been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you? And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson is from Romans chapter 16, verses 25 through 27. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed, and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith, to the only wise God, be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. We're going to continue with Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, bottom half of page 9, very top of page 10. Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
and mercy be unto you from the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, who doesn't like a good mystery? Most people do. Maybe not a murder mystery, but most people like mysteries. They're intrigued by the unknown and want to know the answers. Uh, some we get answers to. For quite some time, I was very curious about why convenience stores like 7-Eleven are open, that are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year, have locks on the front door. It did not make any sense to me. If you're always open, why have a lock? Well, it turns out that from time to time they have to do maintenance or stock inventory or whatever it is, and so they actually lock the door. They have an excuse or a reason for that. The other one that really bugged me was drive up ATMs at the bank that the instructions were in Braille. That really bothered me. How many people, I, were, I wonder, were out there driving around blind, coming to the ATM to get money? Turns out none. <laughs> I knew that, but I couldn't figure out why. Turns out, in the production process, it's easier to configure a machine like that that fits every place as opposed to make one without the little bumps or whatever it is that they need. So some mysteries get answered. Other mysteries do not. They are still working to figure out who built the great pyramids of Egypt. Uh, there's other things that they uncover and cannot figure out and continue to wonder. The Bible is full of mysteries. It's full of mysteries that God has given to us in his word, and they are mysteries, and we understand that they're mysteries, and we don't try to make up reasons for these mysteries or explanations for these mysteries. Some people do, but we shouldn't. The things that we need to know, God has told us in Scripture, the things that have been revealed to you are the things that you need to know. The rest of it, it's important, but you don't have to have it for salvation. And yet people persist in trying to find the answers to the mysteries. And there just really are no answers. You can start in Genesis and go all the way to Revelation, and you will find them strewn throughout biblical history. Uh, things like... Um, when Moses went to the bush and it was burning, uh, how did the bush burn? We know it was God, but we don't know the logistics of this. God does what he does. Uh, we have the thing where Peter has the sheet let down from heaven and has all the animals on it that he can pick from. We don't know how that worked. God did whatever he did. Peter doesn't tell us that there were uh, great hands that let down the sheet, as some people might expect. And yet today's story from the gospel has some of those mysteries in it. And in fact, uh, our main character, well, if you count Jesus as the main character because he's not there yet, but Mary, the other main character, uh, she actually has some questions about some of these things. And again, I feel like that people of the biblical times, both Old and New Testament, kind of understood angels. And I say this just because I have yet run across an, ex an a, a example of this or an episode of this where the person who encounters the angel for some reason is distraught or concerned or fear for their lives over this person that just appears to them. Just like happened with Mary. The angel Gabriel just poof, he's there. My daughters would be either screaming or like, who are you? You know. <laughs> but Mary converses with this angel. Like, she kind of knows who he is, and she's not sure why he's there. That's part of the mystery, so why are you here? And he delivers the message that she is going to have the Messiah, the Son. The Son of God, the one who's been promised from way back uh, to come and bring uh, things right, to make things right, to make it possible for man to be reconciled with God. And she knew the story, obviously. She knew the prophecies, I'm sure, very well. But then she asked the question, so how? How is this going to happen? I'm a virgin. And the angel explains that the Holy Spirit will be responsible for this. We don't get the details. We don't need the details. But still a mystery. So the most ancient mystery, and the one that people have talked about for the longest time, even if it's only amongst Christians mostly, is the one about this Messiah. There were over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament about Jesus' coming, uh, and when he would come and how he would come. But even up until his birth, there were still a lot of unknowns. There was a lot of mystery. So he's coming, going to be born in Nazareth, and he'll be born to a virgin. That still doesn't narrow it down a whole lot. Still a lot of people around, running around, a lot of females, probably a lot of virgins. 
And yet he comes into the world shrouded in all this mystery. And even though he comes shrouded in this mystery, there are those who were kind of expecting it. Not knowing what to expect, that's part of the mystery. The wise men who came from the east, who started and traveled, we think, for several months to get where they got, they came because they knew about the prophecy about the star and as part of the uh, prophecy of the new king of Israel, of the Hebrews. They came because they wanted to see and they found. We don't know exactly how they knew about the prophecy because they were in a place where Christianity or the Israelites were not. We believe it has to do with Daniel, but that's not a certainty. So there's a mystery there. The angels told the shepherds they didn't know what was going on. It was still a mystery to them, but they went. So a lot of mystery shrouding this whole thing, and yet he comes into the world with a lot of warning, a lot of, uh, a lot of understanding of what would happen, and yet mystery. That's the oldest mystery, this Messiah that's been promised that's going to come into the world, and yet that mystery has been revealed to us now. He's come into the world. He's done the first part of all this thing that needs to take place. He's done everything except for the second return. He came into the world. That mystery has been revealed to us. And as we understand this mystery, as we understand Jesus being born into the world, Jesus growing up as a young man, becoming uh, of a young man's age and starts his ministry of about three or three and a half years, depending on how you count it, we understand all that. We can look back at it. We don't understand all the mechanisms so like when he turned water into wine, we don't know how he did that. He's God. That's his business. It's not magic. He literally turns water into wine. And raising people from the dead and casting out demons and all those things, those are godly things. They're a mystery to us. We believe them. Why do we believe them? We believe them because we believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And because we believe that Jesus is the Messiah, we've been given the gift of faith. It's a free gift. That's a mystery to us as well. How does this work where I don't do anything except not refuse the gift? Certainly I need to do something. Be better, do better, do something. But the mystery is it's given to us freely because we believe. And we can only believe because we are obedient to the Holy Spirit. You can't believe without that. That's a mystery. And so we believe, and we believe all these things that are said about Jesus, and we believe that he is the Son of God, and the other part of this mystery, the best, remist the best part, the best mystery that's revealed to us out of all of this is that you and I and everyone who believes in Jesus is their Savior is forgiven. Is forgiven. Our sins are forgiven. And we know what we've done, or at least most of what we've done or haven't done in life that constitutes a sin before God. And we also know that we continue to sin. It doesn't stop. Some things get better, some things go away, but there's always some sin going on. And this is the best mystery. That throughout all of this, through all of the things that are happening and through all the things we have done or not done and sinned against God, we're still forgiven. It's a mystery. Why would God forgive us just because we believe in his son and don't stop sinning altogether? We're still doing the things he tells us not to do, thinking, saying, or not doing, not thinking, not saying. And he still loves us, and he still cares for us, and he still forgives us. Not because of us, but because of Jesus and what he has done and continues to do. That's a mystery. It's the best mystery. I don't have to do anything. We need to be careful. We don't want to get cocky. We don't go off on the far end and go, I can just do anything I want to. Paul addresses that. No, you cannot. You cannot continue to sin. You cannot continue to be the person you are. And some people say, well, I am. Well, no, you're not. Because if it's bothering you now and you're struggling with this, it's not the same. Because before, you didn't care. Before, you just did it, and it didn't matter because you didn't have an issue with sin or right and wrong before God. You just lived your life. 
There's a difference now. That's a mystery. It's the best mystery. Because it gives the best news that I can face each day knowing that I'm going to stumble and fall. I'm going to sin. I'm going to make mistakes. And God will still forgive me as long as I believe in Jesus. Part of the mystery there that we don't understand is it's a continual process. I told you the story about the windshield wipers. It's, we, as far as we can tell, that's about how it works. As long as we believe in Jesus, we're going to sin, and we know some of the sins we do, but sometimes we sin and we have no idea that we have sinned. And yet Jesus still forgives us. We don't have to. We are not required to every day give a litany of the sins we have committed or uh, the things we've done in omission uh, before God. We just say, forgive me, Lord. I love you and I'm sorry. Please forgive me and help me to do better. That's a mystery. Now, I can't speak for everybody, and my parents loved me dearly, and they were very good to me, but my dad wasn't very forgiving if I forgot and did something a second time. <laughs> if I messed up, he or my mom would discipline me in expectation that it would not happen again. Here's the deal. Usually it didn't happen again. I found something new to do, and then I got punished for that. But God forgives he doesn't forgive like we forgive, and this is a mystery too. We've sinned against God Almighty, and he could if he wanted to. He could keep a running tally sheet, and whatever he wanted to, he could pull that out and say, uh-huh, you did this. The mystery is, he says, when I forgive your sins, they're as far as the east is from the west. They do not exist anymore. Now, if you do it again, yes, that's there, and he will forgive that too, but it's a mystery. It's the best mystery. We don't need to know how it works. We just need to believe it works. And why do we need to believe it works? Because we continue to beat ourselves up over sins we've brought before the Lord. For some reason, it's in our psyche that we need to keep asking for forgiveness for something that's already been forgiven. Or something we think is so heinous that if we don't do it, if we don't ask again, somehow it's going to come back up. <coughs> And even worse than doing it to ourselves is we do it to other people. Because we know some of the sins some people have committed because they've committed them against us. And what we're called to do is to forgive and forget, right? Sometimes it's pretty hard to forget. We say we forgive, but we keep thinking about it. It keeps making us angry. So we still haven't really forgiven mysteries of God. Some of them we don't need to know. Some of them we just accept as mysteries and we go forward in life embracing what the Lord does for us and gives to us and the opportunities he gives to us. We embrace those and we know that we're sinners but we know that we're forgiven and we are thankful that we are forgiven and out of that love because of the love God has for us and Christ has for the Father, we move forward and do the things he's asked us. It's a great mystery, and it's the best mystery, and it's been revealed to us that your sins are forgiven. It would be pointless if we didn't know this. We'd be running around still trying to get forgiveness for something, not knowing whether it's forgiven or not. But at the end of the day, if you believe that Jesus Christ is your Savior, and you've striven to be obedient to the Holy Spirit, I love that word, striven. <laughs> it's a good word. If you've done that, at the end of the day, you are completely forgiven and you get to rest. You can put everything to rest and you can get up the next morning. You don't have to be fearful. Yes, you're going to sin. Yes, you're going to make mistakes. But you're still walking hand in hand with the same very God who forgave you the night before. You get a fresh start and you move on. These mysteries, some of them, don't need to haunt us. We don't need to worry about how it works. Just accept it. People used to wonder, you know, about the universe. Is the earth moving? Is the sun moving? Everybody had different options, and they finally come up with a, came up with an answer. It doesn't matter. The sun comes up. Who cares if the earth's moving or the sun's moving? It really doesn't matter as long as it comes up. If it doesn't come up, that's a different story. <laughs> Something ain't working right. The best mystery of all is the one revealed to us through the words of 
God and his scriptures that not only did Jesus come into the world and live and suffer and die for us, but our sins are forgiven because we believe in him. There's another mystery that we still contemplate quite a bit, and that's what happens when we come to the rail and receive the very body and blood of Jesus Christ. We don't know how that works. It really doesn't matter how it works. What matters is Jesus says, I do this, and I want you to do it, because it forgives you of your sins, and it grants you salvation and uh, release from sin, Satan, and death. Do this. Again, let the mysteries that we don't understand that have not been revealed to us, let them go. Quit trying to figure out the numbers in the Bible. You can scratch your head all day and you might come up with an answer, but it probably won't be the right answer. Quit trying to find the signs for the end of times because here's the deal. It doesn't matter when it comes for you as long as you're right with God. If you're right with God, when it happens, wherever you're at, you're still good to go. And trust in the one mystery that has been revealed to you, Jesus Christ, our Savior. And of course, the best part of that is he forgives your sins because you believe in him. Think about that. I'm telling you from personal experience, your day will go better. Your life will go better. You're still going to have issues. Uh, there's still going to be money issues, health issues, relationship issues. COVID will still be around for a while. All those things are going to exist, but you don't need to focus on them. You need to focus on your Lord, and if you do that and trust in his words, the secret that has been revealed to you, you can face it. You can face it head on. And you don't deal with what happens. That's the mistake we all make. He deals with what happens. He deals with. He pleads for you to come and lay your burdens down at the foot of his cross and say, Lord, I'm tired. I can't deal with this. You deal with it. I'm turning it over to you. And walk away with the assurance and the confidence that that's what he wants. He's not looking for you to fix it. Unlike my children who used to come and, Daddy, fix it. I broke it. He's going to fix it. He already has fixed it, the it that really needs to be fixed. And that's the best mystery revealed, that no matter what you do, in the sense of all these things work together in Christ, as long as you believe he is your Savior, and as long as you continue to turn to him and trust in him, he forgives you. And if God of the universe forgives you, you have nothing else to worry about. Because everything else is minor. It's a minor thing. The major thing is your relationship to Jesus Christ. So you can ponder the mysteries of the Bible all you want to, but if they haven't been revealed in Scripture, let them go. And don't worry about if you get an answer when you get to heaven. That doesn't matter either. Focus on your Savior and walking the path He has for you and doing what He has for you to do and waiting anxiously for his return to take you home. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through your faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. We will continue by singing the first and second stanzas of Hear the Pennies Dropping. I'll put the vase down for the children, and then we will continue with the service.
Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the many gifts you give to us. And they are gifts. These are not things that we have worked hard for. They are not things that we merit. They are complete and total gifts from you. Gifts of time, talent, treasure, and technology. Oh Lord, we pray that we would use them in ways that would bring praise, honor, and glory to your name. Because you alone are deserving, you alone are worthy, you and you alone are God. Please rise. We continue as we confess our beliefs as found in the Apostles' Creed, beginning at bottom page 11. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. According to the Scriptures, he is the Lord of heaven and earth. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, as we draw closer to the grand celebration of the incarnation and birth of your beloved Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you for making known the mystery of your love from the very first promise to Adam and Eve through the continued witness of the holy prophets, apostles, and evangelists, and finally through your loving voice, to the ministers of your church to this day. Grant that your living word ever calls us and all sinners to repentance and faith in your only begotten Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep all you have called to preach and teach and care for your people in true faith. Guard them against the attacks of the evil one and give them health and joy in their ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send your spirit over the whole world that those who lead in the authority of government acknowledge your laws and will, making for times of peace that we may live faithfully in safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By your holy word and sacrament, strengthen us to be obedient to obedient living. Send your grace, mercy, peace, and love to surround our families, inspire those of various vocations in the world, comfort, defend, and heal all those in times of illness or distress. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By the mystery of our Lord's incarnation, his life of obedient faith, and his substitutionary death on the cross, establish us in the one true faith, and strengthen us in lives obedient to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. I'll ask you at this time to turn to someone near you and extend the verbal peace of the Lord. Uh, you may bump fists or elbows, and if you are comfortable, you may shake hands or hug. The peace of the Lord be with you. We continue with the service of the sacrament, the prayer of thanksgiving. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. 
You once proclaimed your saving promise through the prophets and by the apostles and evangelists. You published the good news of your saving promise, fulfilled in the birth and life, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant that by your word our eyes, ears, and hearts be filled, with, be filled and strengthened with sure faith, that being instructed in the doctrine of the blessed prophets, apostles, and evangelists, we, are faith, we faithfully eat the body and drink of the blood of our Lord Jesus and declare his salvation to all the world. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you for the forgiveness of sins. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Just do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please be seated. We're going to continue with the distribution of Holy Communion. There are three teachings in Scripture that we adhere to. And the first is that when you come to receive, you receive the very body and blood of Jesus Christ in, with, and under the bread and the wine. Secondly is that um, we need to examine ourselves before coming to the table. And this is not a written examination or something you're trying to remember, but a prayerful contemplation with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, of God the Father. The relationship you have with the Father through the Son, who by God's grace and through faith in His Son, you are saved through the work of the Holy Spirit. You are still sinners, but you are saints at the same time, and God treats you as saints and not as sinners. Third is the sin in your life that needs to be dealt with. You can't just ignore it, and you can't do anything with it. It's the job of the task of the Holy Spirit. And so you are called to strive to be obedient to the Holy Spirit as he reaches in and removes that sin and cleans you up to make you right before your Lord. We use the common cup and the individual cup. If you take the individual cup, hold it so I can see it, and I will not offer you the common cup. We use wine. If you cannot take wine, there's an inner circle in the individual cup tray that has a lighter-colored alcohol-free wine. Uh, as you come down, please do the social distancing with the people in front of you. Give them space uh, as well as down here, but there shouldn't be any more than will fit across here if the ushers are properly doing their measurements and calculations in their head. Uh, I do have two hymns for you to sing. Uh, they're listed in the uh, worship folder, and they're also going to be posted on the wall behind me. So having said that, also if you're an older child or an adult and coming uh, just to, and not to receive communion, but just wish a blessing, Come and cross your hands over your chest, and I will bless you. So having said that, and there's baskets on either side for your empty individual cups. Having said that, come and receive what Jesus Christ has prepared for you. It is a mystery, but we trust because of the faith that we have been given, which is also a mystery. Please rise. We continue with the Nunc Dementis on page 17.
continue to the bottom of page 17 with a post-communion thanksgiving. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue with our mission outreach prayer. As you say this prayer, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you the name and face of someone specific whom the Lord may touch through you. Together, Lord, lay some soul upon my heart and love that soul through me. And may I ever do my part to win that soul for thee. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you in his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Uh, you may be seated or you may stand, whichever you feel comfortable with. We're going to close with Joy to the World, bottom page of 18, top of 19. Joy to the World. Please be seated. You did very well. Um, let's see. Uh, contribution envelopes, giving back envelopes as I call them, are out in the narthex on a table. So please check that. I'm not sure if they're in alphabetical order or number order, but your name is out there if you get envelopes. So do what? Alphabetical as according to Chuck. So if they're not, we blame Chuck. Okay, so they're out there. If you did not get envelopes and want envelopes, please contact Kathy Pergandy. Kathy, raise your hand. Everybody knows Kathy or should know Kathy. Uh, if you got envelopes and no longer wish to use them, contact Kathy. 
same person. Uh, I know some, we've had at least one person come forward to doing all their giving online, so, and that's great if you want to do that, but you do not have to do that. Uh, you've got pictures in here of the, uh, some of the programs that were done by the Little Saints Preschool this past week. Uh, they had a great time. Uh, we wish we could open it up to everybody, but of course due to seating arrangements, it's just uh, mom and dad, immediate family. But they did a great job. Uh, I think it was very uh, wonderful that the uh, first group, especially the little ones, the uh, three-year-olds, I guess, uh, their thing was, what's the best thing about Christmas? And oddly enough, they came up with the answer that Jesus is. So that's good. I'm glad of that. I was very happy. I was kind of worried there for a minute, but it turned out they liked Jesus best. So uh, Santa was a close second, but Jesus won. So, um, so birthdays. Phil, you just recently had a birthday, right? Phil Sto Philip Stojan. Uh, let's see, Susan. And Millie, you just had a birthday. Wow, did you have a good time? Good, I'm glad. Millie had a good time. So, did we miss anybody's birthdays? So, uh, let's sing happy birthday for Phil and for Millie. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Millie and Phil. May Jesus week is a little bit busy for me, but that's okay. Wednesday night is our last Advent midweek service, and there will be goodies afterwards, and so far they've been all very, very good. And this morning, if you want to grab some, there's some in the fellowship hall. There's plenty to go around, uh, and I'm sure there's coffee as well. And then Thursday, Christmas Eve, will be that evening. You have not one, not two, but three opportunities to come and worship your Lord. Four o'clock, seven o'clock, and eleven o'clock. Seven o'clock will be masks required get the word right one of these days, but 4 and 11 will be optional, and they will all be candlelight services. Uh, they will all three have different messages. Uh, some of the music will be the same because it's Christmas Eve. What can I do about that? So uh, having said that, then uh, Friday, Christmas Day, and of course, you know, Christmas Day will be closed. Nobody will be here. Uh, we'll have service on the 27th and then roll into the last part of this year, calendar year, and into the first part of 2021. And if for no other reason, we should be thankful and happy that we are still about doing God's business, and hopefully and prayerfully, 2021 will not be as exasperating as 2020 was. That's all been said. Anything I missed here? Yes, Sonia. Glad it's Betty's because it's not mine. <laughs> Thank you, Sonia, for being diligent with finding stuff on the floor. No, uh, okay, that's good to know. I'm glad that they have done that. My uh, compliments to Dolores and Sonia. So the Benevolence Fund is something that we tap into to help people, as she said, in both in our congregation and outside the congregation. And so uh, you can give any time, but they've apparently, uh, it's a mystery, but apparently they've got some in there somewhere, and as you come across them, uh, if you are so led, give some money to the Benevolence Fund, and that will be used to help people in need. Anything else? All right, so uh, when you leave here, uh, adult Bible study will be in about 10, 15 minutes in the fellowship hall. There are goodies. There are lots of goodies, and they are good goodies. They're not bad goodies. Uh, and so we're working on Holy Communion, and when we're finished with Holy Communion, we're going to take a break in this series and do something different. So uh, we want to get through with Holy Communion, but you're invited to join us as we finish that up. So having said that, as you joyfully get up and start the mystery trek through the doors and out into wherever you're going, you are going to be entering the mission field. And the mystery is, what mission will the Lord lay before you? Well, you'll find out when he reveals it to you. You just uh, smile and say, thank you, Lord, and give me some more and let's go. So go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you haven't Christmas shopped yet, do it soon. <laughs>